Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. I'm Sandra Reyes. Uh, I am a training assistant uh, in LACNIC, and uh, now we are opening the webinar you were invited to. I want to thank you for participating in this open space for the community. And I also want to thank our panelists, Janina Hensky uh, from LACNIC, who will be speaking in this tutorial on network security um, RPKI. Let me, before we start, let me tell you what the webinar is going to work with for those participating for the first time. Let me start by presenting, by sharing my screen. So now we, we started then at 17 UTC. This webinar will take about 40 minutes. And uh, throughout the session, you're going to be able to pose questions in the Q&A panel. You'll be able to see uh, that uh, in the bottom uh, toolbar. And here you can uh, post any questions that you may have. And at the end, we are going to leave a few minutes for answering questions. Let me also mention that this webinar will be recorded. So you receive an email with a link of the recording for you to go through the video again, as well as the presentation with the slides that are also going to be available. And um, so you may ask any questions you may have about the webinars. You may write it to um, this uh, email, training at lacnig.net or visit uh, the uh, webinars uh, tab in the LACNIC uh, net uh, website. So Janina, I give you the floor. How are you? Hello, Sandra. Can you hear me? Can you all see me well? And can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Good. So let me start sharing the screen. Let me know when you see the presentation. You, can you see it there? Yes, yes, there we can see it. Excellent, thank you. So let's start with a presentation on RPKI, the uh, um, resource public key infrastructure. My name is Janina Penske, and I'm the leader of registry services at LACNIC. First of all, let me Start uh, with what we're going to see in this webinar first, the theoretical part, and there are a more hands on part. The theoretical part we'll see about uh, uh, around uh, hijacking what is our RPKI, the, its infrastructure, the ROAs, you may have heard about them, how RPKI works, how the validation works, and then a hands-on part where we're going to see how to configure RPKI in Melaknik. So please have your user's name and your password for Melaknik. You can test it. And if not, I'm going to show it here on the screen. And uh, we're, we're going to see what you see when you enter that uh, the LACNIC tools and you want to use RPKI. So let's start. As to the distribution of uh, numeric resources uh, of the internet, IPv4 and IPv6, we have IANA, that is the entity that uh, oversees the global um, operations of the autonomous systems. Uh, and uh, the DNS, the, the uh, country codes, and they assign the resources to the national registries. In our case, there are five regional registries that, and the uh, IANA assigns it to, uh, for instance, in our case, to LACNIC, and then LACNIC assigns it to the organizations. They may be internet service providers, ISPs, or end users. The ISPs can then just assign them to end users. Who can use each resource? Well, the organization when the organization has the internet resources in general, they tell their uh, provider or an RIR the prefixes they are going to announce. They, they can do it 
through the internet, in a form, through the website, uh, but it can be more or less formal. But the issue is that at the verification level, it's, it's a matter of trust. The providers, the peers may check in the RIRs who is, the information may not be signed, or the IRRs where the information is not signed. And there are a few mechanisms to authenticate the right to use it. So as I was telling you, the verification is not uh, as thorough as it should be. And mostly it is based uh, on uh, peer trust. What may happen? Well, um, unauthorized prefixes may be announced in, in the internet. So an organization may be announcing uh, resources that were not assigned. That's called uh, known as fraud. Uh, Hijacks. And th this may be due to two different causes. It may be intentional or because of an error. If it's an error, it's usually a mistake in configuration or fat finger. And intentional, it may be that the perpetrator somehow is stealing traffic. There are several known cases, such as Pakistan Telecom versus YouTube in 2008 where they started uh, stealing traffic from YouTube, China Telecom in 2020. In recent years, there's an increasing number of such cases. That is why it's important now to look for ways to prevent uh, these risks from happening. One of them is through RPKI. RPKI, it's a resource public key infrastructure and it validates the right or usage of the resource. That's the objective. So it validates that someone that is announcing IPv4, IPv6 uh, um, resources or a certain ASN is indeed the, the one assigned. With a hierarchic model um, of the assigning of resources through the RIRs, so that's uh, what we saw earlier from RIR to ISPs, et cetera, and through the usage of a digital certificates based on a certain standard, X509. So RPKI is standardized by a, a working group in IETF. So it's a global standard. As I was telling you, RPKI is a technological platform that uh, enables uh, the implementation of security improvements in uh, the global routing system. It defines a public key infrastructure to be applied in the routing. So what happens is LACNIC provides resources to the organizations and they also, it, it also gives a digital certificate of those resources that prove that the organization using those resources is really the organization that was assigned by like here. So the certificates attest that the resources belong to, were assigned to that organization. So it's a verifiable proof of uh, having been assigned th those resources. So what uh, does RPKI solution imply, it has several components. First of all, it has the IPs, the ASNs, the certificates, then we have the ROAs. I'm going to explain briefly that these are objects signed digitally to support the routing security. Then we have, in other words, the ROAs are a declaration of a policy on the publications Another component is that you, you, you get a distributed repository that stores the PKI object and the signed routing object, the ROA, CRLs, M and F. So it's a mechanism for validating prefixes. This is the way it, it appears. So it's the resource certificates. We're going to have a signature, a public key. Those would be the blocks that will be announced. The, the public key is associated to those resources and it will be signed. 
by the certificate, the RESTERT. We're going to see it better in the next slide. So on top, there you have the root certificate, then it signs the one below, and you create a, a hierarchy of certification of resources. So here we have the root certificate. Can you see my cursor? Yes, can you see it? Yes, we can see it. So the root certificate, here we see what well, here it is signed and then the next one is signed and here we have each of the resources that are going to be administered. Here you see the structure better. LACNIX RPKI, you get the first certificate issued by LACNIC, that is the root certificate, then you sign another. When LACNIC assigns uh, resources to an ISP, as we see here, then it assigns the resources and the ISP can also manage that LACNIC should issue a certificate. And then what happens is that you have to generate the ROAs and I'm going to explain it in further detail. This is a policy for using the resources, but somehow this is a sort of chain of signatures hierarchically. The one on top signs it, the one below issues a certificate to this ISP, and from then on it is transmitted downwards. So, respect to the RPKI. The ISPs or any organization may define and certify the route announcements authorized that they authorize to be performed. That is done through digital objects called the ROAs that are signed with the private key of the certificate. Once the certificate is created, then the ROAs get signed. So first you create the certificate of the resources, then you sign with that uh, private key. And that signs the ROA that are the declaration of the policy of usage of uh, those uh, resources. Once I create the ROA, the ROA tells you the policy for using the resources. We'll say through this ASN, well, we're going to see it later, but through this ASN, I'm going to announce these resources, but this has been validated, showing that I was assigned these resources by LACNIC and I have the right to announce this. This is a great step forward toward a more secure routing to prevent anyone from announcing anything and uh, stealing traffic or causing uh, harm. So it permits the validation of the autonomous system that originates a BGP announcement. That's the validation of origin. So we ensure that we configure the, if we all configure the needed ROA, we can control better that each organization is announcing the resources that they really are entitled to. What is an ROA? Well, we are seeing, going to see it later. It's the authorization to uh, originate routes in uh, uh, with a specific uh, um, format. Here you can see the format. You have the ASN that will announce it. And what are the ISPs that are the, the IP blocks that are going to be announced and the, the maximum degradation of the block that will be announced. So using the certificates we can create objects describing the origin of a prefix as you see here the asn the prefixes that will be announced what is the maximum length here we would have the block of slash 16 but with a maximum length of 24 and here from 24 to 20 with for this block with this prefix so the ROA is, is routing origin authorization. And as I said, the ROAs contain information on the ASN of origin 
permitted for each set of prefixes. The ROAs are signed using the certificates generated by RPKI and the signed ROAs are copied in a repository. So that's the important thing. We have ROAs that uh, we say who can announce which uh, prefixes, what blocks, and they are signed. And all that information is kept in a repository. Anybody can download the ROAs and check what you're receiving. If you're what you're receiving from the BGP matches, that would be the validation. So a router can use the ROAs to validate or to reject something. So what can be done is that with RPKI gives you the possibility of validating the use of a resource. It validates the signature of the ROAs and it is an extra source of information that allows you to verify the routing information. Through this, I can create routing policies through which I can give priority or validate or invalidate a certain announcement that I'm receiving, checking it against the repositories, the RPKI repositories. So this is what I was saying. Through RPKI, you can validate the right to use a resource by an organization the possibilities that it provides, that is how to build filters of announcements using BGP. You can build route, routing uh, rules based on the cryptographic keys. If, I, if it's valid, I enable it, I allow it to, to go by, and if not, I can discard it. And then the information uh, signature in HUI services or in RPSL services. So here, I'm going to show you how this part of the validation works. What an operator does is, well, here you have Lucknik and has the entire RPKI repository. And what um, the ISPs do is they have a cache server you download here the whole repository. So the routers, whenever they, well, they can obtain the information of the ROAs from this uh, server that has all the information and it acts as a repository. So every time that they're going to make announcement, it can match it against this information that's available. So, the validation process in the routing infrastructure would be first the validation of the ROAs as signed uh, objects with this validating, and uh, it's available in this validating caches. And uh, on the other hand, we have the, inf the updates of the BGPs, and this is part of the BGP protocol. So, and what they do with a cache is download the contents of the RPKI repositories. Then the certificates and the ROAs are validated cryptographically with all the chain of signatures that we had mentioned. Uh, then the correct inclusion of resources. And in the routers, they build a database with the, uh, the prefixes and the ASN of origin. So the routers put together a database with the information that they receive from the caches. There you have the part of the prefixes, the minimum length, the maximum length, the original AS, and then they apply a set of rules to assign a state of validity to each update of the BGP. The operators, may have the validity attribute to be able to have a routing policies. They put valid if the AS and the ASN of origin, the maximum length. And so and they see whether the ROA matches or if there are no ROAs for the prefixes. There are prefixes that are not covered. That is why it's important for all of us to configure the RPKI to have more reliable routes. 
later on we're going to see some statistics to see what to what extent RPKI is implemented, but it may happen that there may be no ROAs for a certain prefix, and then it will appear as not found. That is why it's important to see that with the greatest configuration of ROAs we may have, then the greater the validity we'll be able to give to the entire network. So here we are going to see an example. For instance, here you receive this update, the prefix, it would be the block 200 000 slash nine with the origin, uh, with the AS of origin 20. And if we look here at the configuration, we have this, well, the 200 000 with the prefixes from eight to 21. So this is where it would be distributed with AS and 20. So this, would be a valid case. Another common error in the case of YouTube is putting the prefix well, but this part of the prefix is well, but then instead of saying AS as ASN20, it may say AS30, and that would be a route hijack. That is, that this will be announced through another ASN. With BGP, there's no way you can tell whether it's valid or not, but with RPKI, you can see it. The table cannot be altered because it is signed cryptographically. It's secure data, and you can compare what I received from the BGP and the RPKI. So this is the value that this adds. Let's see another case here, for instance, here you have the announcement, 200 with a slash 22, and the ASN of origin is AS20. And here you see that it would not be inside 8 from 21. So this is invalid. And then another case, this other prefix that is uh, 189 slash 9, this block is not configured for this ROA in uh, the table that I have. So that is not found. It's not that it's invalid, but it's not, nobody has configured that yet. Okay, so re with respect routing uh, um, policies with validation of origin using the uh, BGP validity attribute, the network operators may build routing policies that I just mentioned, that is that the routes can be tagged as the valid and they can be assigned a greater preference than the not found or, and, and you can discard the routes that are invalid that can be due to mistakes or intentional. That is why it is very important to understand that RPKI is a source of information. Then the operators can use as they please. They can define the routing policies the way they prefer them. It's important for everyone to configure RPKI to be able to check the validity of the information when needed. So that would be the general uh, background of theoretical part. So we have the RPKI. What it does is it validates that whoever is announcing a block is really the organization that has been assigned through these digital certificates and the signatures. Then, so you configure these ROAs that are these policies, these objects where you show that the ASN will announce a certain block and that will be signed. So now we'll see RPKI in Milaknik. If you have your user's name and your password and you can please enter Milaknik to see how you have it. If you don't have it, I can show it here. Here, for instance, I got into 
milaknik.net as a user. So let's put it here. I come here to my organization, then I go to services. So here you see a part that says RPKI, and then I'm going to go here to create ROAs. And there you'll see this part by default. I didn't appear, it, it appears, I didn't put it, but it appears by default and with the hashtag because these are comments, but by default, this is an example, but here you have this configured automatically the way your ROA should look if you want to activate it. But if you take the hashtag and you put save, then you have it. Here, I have a block that I have assigned. So the block appears here, the prefix, and here I have to put a name and the ASN through which I'm going to uh, announce it. It's important because I, I entered, uh, for, for the one that enters the ROA is the one that has been assigned the resources. So I am the one who can create the ROAs. Then you click and save and there it's ready. Then here you have the certificate. If you look at it, it's active, but if you don't have it active, then there's a, there, you're going to see a button that says create certificate, you create it and that's it. And then here you have the part, This, if you look at the menu, here you have to create an ROA for the certificates that you just announced. And then we're going to see what are the ROAs that are active. Here you see it like this, you see the active ROAs and here I have the ROA of that would be for this ASN for these resources and then also with the prefix length. I can edit it if I wish to or duplicate it or I can revoke it and I can also see a history of the revoked ROAs. So I also have a section to see the reports. So you put a uh, deploy report here, you can say this uh, RPKI, and here you can see a report of the state of the RPKI in your organization. This is another organization I, I entered here as an example. This organization has 81% valid. They also have some invalid ones, or others not found. So if they are separated in IPv4 and IPv6, here you can see more specifically, and this helps you solve it. So here we have, they didn't find it and the invalid ones. So if we click directly here and correct, If you go directly to correct, there, it's going to take you to this part here so that you can correct the problem directly, right? And then here too, it gives you a list saying which are valid, which are not, etc. breaking this down. So that would be the part of me LACNIC. Now we're going to see in LACNIC tools. This is a tool for that is a very useful tool if you don't know it. And in this tool, you can see a lot of information in addition to RPKI. You can see the information of who is BGP, reverse delegations. And here specifically, we're going to see the RPKI but it's a very useful tool that gives you a lot of very interesting information. Here first, you can put the, well, the um, uh, organization, then uh, IPv4, IPv6, there I put the organization that's going to be the same one that we used earlier. Here you see all the numeric resources and that the organization has been assigned. Here you have data of the, 
who is, and then uh, in the bottom you will see more. And I'm showing you this so that you can see this uh, better. And here you have the valid ones. These are the same numbers that I saw in Amelia Clinic for my organization. And then we have IPv4, IPv6, uh, the ones that were valid, invalid, and not found. So if we click on this, explore RPKI, it's going to show us the details. Here, the same thing appears. We're showing the percentage of valid, invalid, and not found. And here, I show you the details so that we can correct this. It, this appeared as it valid, invalid, not found, and you have two choices. You can go create an ROA. It's going to take you again to the screen of Milaknik that we saw to be able to create the ROAs, and it appears by default. But the only thing that you have to do is to remove the comment if it's correct, and then you have this other button that is to download, and you download the TXT. And then you would have this. This is the configuration that you have to put to correct it in Milaknik 2. Here, too, you list all the announcements. And if it's valid, invalid, not found. So that would be what we can see in Laknik tools that's public. You can enter there and see it. And in Milaknik, that would be your own. In your own organization. Now, I'm going to give you some statistics for you to have an idea. This information we obtain from Ripestar. You can see starting in 2011, how this has evolved. Here we have the number of ROAs in each of the regional uh, registries. And you see that here, this has increased, some of them faster than others. In recent years, there's been a more significant growth. In RIPE, it was, this was more gradual. And then APNIC, LACNIC, and AFWINIC. So all of them grew. This is the number of certificates too. We see how they have increased with each. Uh, we see that RIPE has uh, more than APNIC, then LACNIC, and then ARIN and AFRINIC. And now we are going to see in our region how these are distributed. Here you see the percentage of IPv4 resources that have ROAs. Ecuador is the one that has the most in numbers. The darker the blue, the more the higher the percentage. So Ecuador has 99.45%, followed by Guyana, Venezuela, also with 95%. And uh, so you see this here. And then we see with IPv6, what is the percentage of resources that have ROAs? Here we see the one that has more. This is a bit lower. Argentina is the one that has more. It's 82. Also Ecuador, 78, more or less. These are the statistics in our region. Some conclusions to uh, take into account. Well, the routing system is one of the most important pillars in the internet, but we need to consider that even today, many things are based on trust. And that is why it's uh, important to see the way we can mitigate any attacks. Anyway, it, there have been great there has been great progress with RPKI so, and this is growing but still we have to continue to work the idea is that we want the majority of operators to have RPKI configured and also the certificates of resources of ROAs these are a tool for those who have 
assigned resources. And those that can configure it is those that have the resources announced. It's important to sign the resources and to define the ROAs that announce it. You also have to be careful when generating the ROAs because these are the uh, usage policies that are typical of you. If I'm going to announce this prefix with this ASN, so you have to be careful how you configure it because you are declaring the routing policies that others are going to use to validate and to be able to give it priority or validity in your internal routing policies. So you need to be careful. It's important for everybody to um, report to this. And uh, to sign the repositories that is very important to maintain a secure and reliable internet. So this would be all now. Good, good, Janina. Yes, thank you. So now we're going to see the questions and while they write, please write down all the questions and queries and doubts that you have about this tutorial. This is the moment to do that. So let's go to start reading the questions. Yes. Let me say that I'm going to read some of the questions, but Gerardo is going to read others because, well, he's the, a leader in the technology area. So when, when uh, there are more technical uh, questions, he can answer them. So the first part is by an anonymous attendee, and he says, How can you? Uh, how can an internet border router synchronize with a server for validating RPKI routes? Are there any public service that you can uh, consult? Gerardo, would you like to ask that, to answer that? Gerardo, are you there? Well, we let's go to the next question when, when Gerardo comes. This question is by Carlos Sanabria. And it says, is it necessary to have the ROA of the all the resources? That's the first question. There, there are two more. Yes, let's go by one one. Is it necessary to have the ROA of all the resources? No. You can create an ROA, and there you can say maybe you have three slash 22 prefixes, but in that ROA, you can announce, you can say with ASN such, I announce one slash 22 prefix, but maybe you want to announce another prefix with another ASN, and then you're going to create another ROA. So you can configure it as you like. The second question by Carlos is how frequently are the repositories updated? Gerardo will say that. Hello? Yes, let me complement that answer. Good, thank you, Gerardo. The repository is generated once an hour, but with the new protocol RDP, any changes made by the users? through Milaknik, these are seen almost instantaneously. One or two minutes later, you see the objects pub published. So the, are the periodic uh, renewals of the other resources, that's done once an hour. Is, is that clear? Good. Should, should we go on with the third question? to see um, is what happens when LACNIC's repository is inactive? What is its SLA? Mm, 
now there are no established LSAs. The LACNIC has a structure that provides great availability. It's never been offline. Um, no. And if that were to happen, what happens is that the ROA information is not published. It's as if nobody had any RPKIs. So they, they would be in the same situation as now where you're not using RPKI. Good. Leonardo, do you think I can read the first question by the anonymous uh, uh, um, attendee? How can, how can an internet border router synchronized with a server for validation of RPKI routes. Are there any public service to consult it? Uh, yes, of course. Well, what happens with the repository, and uh, Janina showed a graph that showed it. There, there's a software that is a, an intermediary between LACNIC and the routers that is the RPKI validator, there was one in the Ford project developed with Nick Mexico. And so it makes available the information cryptographically validated to the border routers. That relation between the border router, uh, it's, it's of extreme trust because the it, and it is the closeness and the security between a border router and a validator to be good. It's not recommended to use public validators for your routers. And there are public validators, but it's to see what the validator looks like, etc. But it's not for you to connect it with a border router. Good. Perfect. Thank you, Gerardo. I'm going to read the next question. And please tell me then who is going to answer. The question is by Norman Vargas. What is uh, the software uh, for the cache server? Yes, that's a validator. The cache server is the validator. That is an app that permits it to make available the information of the repositories. Now, there are several. You have the Ford project that I mentioned earlier, then the validator by RIPE, another one that is called, um, uh, I'm going to let you know in the chat because there are four or five versions of validator that are used. All right. Norman, so remember, you're going to receive the answer in writing. Thank you, Gerardo. I have the next question by Graciela Martinez. How can you ensure that an organization is not creating ROAs of resources that don't belong to them? Let me answer. Well, actually, when you configure in LACNIC, it won't allow you to create it if you are not allowed. So the the organization that has been assigned the resources is the only one that can configure it. Good, thank you. Now we have another question, also by Norman Vargas. And it says, are there any ways you can get more information about the cache as the installation and do the synchronization with the LACNIC server, et cetera? Gerardo, would you like to answer that? Yes. Well, each validation software, the so-called cache, has its own documentation. Almost all of them are quite simple and quite clear. Now I'm going to send you a link through the chat to show the links of the validators that I'm aware of, and each one brings information and telling you how to install it. Perfect. We see more questions coming in. The next one is by Diego Armando Ruiz. He asks, should I create the RPKIs and ROAs of IPv6 even if I don't have it announced and uh, using it? 
Well, really, you can create it, but they're not going to be used. You are going to start using them when you start announcing them so that when the validation is done, others are going to validate in the routes to see in the tables whether yours is there. In the meantime, it will stay in the repositories unused. Gerardo, would you like to add anything else? Yes, exactly like that. You are going to create an ROA and it says, well, I'm, well, the, the good thing of doing it ahead of time is that uh, by the time you start using it, it will be protected. But in the meantime, it's it has no effect. Or another effect that it will have is that if somebody who's not you uses your IPv6, then you, you may have a benefit. That's good. Good, perfect. So now we have another question by the anonymous uh, attendee. There are two questions. How do you access LACNIC tools? And the second, does LACNIC handle support material to configure the BGP policies and the integration with a cache server? The first about LACNIC tools, I'm going to leave it here in a chat. I'll leave the link. It's HTTPS. Um, uh, slash slash uh, lacnic.net. Um, so I leave it here. Support material to configure the BGP policies. Well, this is a bit more generic, but LACNIC has online courses. There's one specifically called BGP and RPKI. I'm going to leave the link of the campus if you want to come in. There you can see it. Kenardo, would you like to add anything else about the cache server? Yes, it's that. We have the BGP uh, course for BGP, RPKI, how to configure the routers and the caches. Anyway, now in that post, you have very clearly how each is installed and configured. It's quite simple to reach. Good. Thank you. Now, a question by Carlos Sanabria. A few days ago, the LACNIC repository crashed and it took several uh, days. So is this uh, then uh, um, distributed, uh, for example, in the AXPs? Well, we don't have any reports of it, of it uh, crashing, never, never. I don't remember that. Uh, the LACNIC's repository ever crashing. There may be repository errors that may happen as a matter of fact, when you enable the, uh, sometimes there are configuration uh, errors up down, but there's never been, there's no register, there's no history of anything. If you have any information about the case, you can uh, tell me and then I can monitor that. Perfect. The next question by Jorge Diaz. Is there any material to validate the requirements of the cache to, to uh, implement uh, the RPKI validation? I think it's similar to the one before, right? Yes. Is there any material to validate the material necessary for the cache server to implement RPKI? Ah, it's a server. Well, in the document that I shared, you have the links to each of uh, the providers and each has their peculiar requirements. Another a port, for instance, is one that least resources uh, needs and it's more efficient in uh, the consumption of resources. We worked with Nick BR. Maybe I can share another link with a conf uh, configuration of the efficiency of each. And then there's another one that's more user-friendly, such as RIPES. That's more or less the way it is. Well, the next question by Carlos Cagnani. Can you, can uh, your prefix come from more than one AS? Jenny, would you like to say that about the several ROAs? Yes, there can be a, an ROA with different ASs. Oh, you answer, Gerardo. Okay. 
I understand that you need to configure the same prefix through different autonomous systems if possible. In that case, you have to create several ROAs, each one for each autonomous system that you are using. All right, the next question by Jorge Diaz. I think that this in relation with the previous, is there any support material to configure the BGP policies and uh, the integration with the cache server? I'm going to continue to. And then we have another question. Graciela Martinez, the router would be done even if some parts of the system is not available, right? Could you repeat it? Router, routing would be done even if some parts of the system are not available, right? If the RPKI repository is not available, it's as if it didn't exist. It's having, it's like having the internet with no, no RPKI. So in that case, yes. If there are any failures in the generation of the repository or what's published, you just don't consume the ROA's information because it doesn't exist. So the routes are validated as if this didn't exist. Okay. I think that we still have time for more questions. We have one by the anonymous. Uh, if you have only one ASN and uh, several elements, uh, several segments, slash 22, 24, would you create only one ROA in the portal? Well, the important thing is that the ROA, it's one ROA for each autonomous system. So if it's in with the same AS, well, you can include all the IPs that are used there. If you have a slash 22, then it's connected with other comments in the slash. If you have a slash 22 and you announce it in the slash 24, the ROA has a maximum length. So through the maximum length, you indicate that that prefix slash 22 has been announced, is segregated in a slash 24. So, and that is what the policy indicates is that blocks from 22 to 24 are permitted for that autonomous system. Okay, then we have a question by Luis Morales. He says, if an IP, uh, a transit IP provider or an OTTS like Google, et cetera, starts blocking traffic because you don't have your ROA right, is that legal? Mm -mm. I have no idea about the legality of that, but I understanding how this works, each provider or each internet actor adopts its own policy stating what are the tra what is the traffic that they allow to go through their networks and which not. So that may be justified, but I don't know whether there are any legal issues involved. Okay, perfect. Now let's see the next question by Manuel Serrano. Reviewing uh, the portal of LACNIC2 with my AS, I see that my information of my announcements of BGP and RPKI are not deployed. How, what can be causing this and what do you recommend me to do to correct? The first is that if it's announcing it, uh, well, if it's a specific case, you can write to hostmaster at uh, lacnic.net. I'll put it now in the chat and we can discuss it together. Good. Right. So please put it there. Yes, the next question. What happens with the routes that have no ROAs yet? This is a question by Juan Diego Gonzalez. Well, it's what I explained earlier, that there are three validity states, valid, invalid, and this one that you say that would be the not found. So it actually depends on 
the each operator's routing policies. Some of them may give more priority, less priority, but they won't discard it. But they may give more priority to another one with validity. All right, perfect. So now the last two questions. By Pablo Rivias. What do you think if from the IXP a cache validation server is used for all its members? Gerardo? I think that the IXPs are the cases of success that we have in Latin America where there are more users or providers that benefit from RPKIs doing a single point of validation of origin because there you receive many. Uh, so all the providers that connect there will benefit of not receiving any invalid routes. So the IXPs are keys for validation. Perfect, thank you, Gerardo. I have a question from an, by an anonymous uh, attendee. I have a slash 22. Can I create a for slash 24 ROA? I, I answered that a while ago with another question. Okay. So we have one last question by Luis Morales. You mentioned that if you can load a V4 or V6 prefix with two or three. A sense of origin, wouldn't that give rise to an error at the time of validating? Well, not in that case, because the way it works is that when the BGP address comes, it has a, an IP range and an autonomous system. You check that that autonomous system and that IP appears in one ROA, not in all of them, but in some. So if you have many ROAs that have different autonomous systems, even if it appears in just one, that's valid. Good. I think that with this, we finish the questions. We have some comments. I don't know whether you want to answer. In the comments, there's a question by Luis Mallorca. Good afternoon. I understand that, for instance, in the case of an ISP, and for the, for the first time, I want to raise RPKI, should I put my data in the uh, LACNIX router, in my border router? I do validation at the ROA level. Yes, you have two ways you can participate. One is by generating contents, your ROAs, and saying which are your authorizations to validate routes, that is something that you can do. And as you, um, and the other leg is the validation. So it is consuming the information of the rest of the speaker, of, of, of the routers. You can use either one and they are a bit independent. Good, thank you, Gerardo. I think that, that with, those would be all the questions. I don't know whether you want to add anything, maybe with a mail for the questions that you couldn't uh, answer. Now, uh, there I put in the chat postmaster at lacnic.net. You can ask the questions there. Thank you. Thank you again. So, with this, we close. Thank you, Janina. Thank you, Gerardo. That was an excellent tutorial. We invite all the participants to visit, as always, the website in the webinar section. And please pay attention to the social media where we announce the next webinar. So you'll get information of the LACNIC campus and you'll see the dates for training. So thank you again. See you in the next webinar. Have a nice day.